OK, hello. I'm going to give the introduction again. So today's exam prep discussion, we'll be talking about inheritance. OK, I'm going to begin by giving you guys a quick introduction to what inheritance is, what dynamic method selection is, and how casting works. OK, so I think these are like three big things that students often get confused about. OK, so the first thing is, let's say that we create some variables. OK, they're going to all be instances of classes. So we're creating some variable apple, banana, peach, and this guy called illegal. <laughs> OK? So if you guys look at all of these, I want to try to draw attention to some things that you guys may not have known before. OK? When we look at this variable apple, it has a static type and it has a dynamic type. The static type is this thing right here. OK? That's what the static type is. I like to think about the static type as the type of the variable, right? When I create some int x, the type of this variable x is an int. That's what the static type is, OK? The other thing is this thing called the dynamic type, OK? The dynamic type is on the right-hand side. And I like to think about the dynamic type as what the object actually is, OK? So if you guys look at this object apple, it has static type A, meaning it's of type A, and it has dynamic type A because it's actually an instance of the A class, OK? So in this case, you're saying, hey, Soham, like, that's kind of dumb. They're both the same. What's the difference? So if you guys look at this peach instance, notice that the dynamic type is of class B, but the static type is of class A, right? So this works because an instance of class B is of type A, or is like a subclass of type A, OK? That's why this, thing, this line works. Peach, we're allowed to create an object of type peach because every instance of class B is like of type A. I'll give you guys like an example and it'll make more sense. Let's say we have a class person and then we have a class athlete that extends from person, okay? So if I created a person, A is equal to a new athlete, right? This is okay because an athlete is a person. Except if you guys look at the second line right here, this line doesn't work because an instance of class A is not necessarily of type B, right? If we reverse the ordering here, if I said that athlete A is equal to a new person, intuitively it looks wrong and in actuality it is also wrong, okay? So that's the definition of like static and dynamic types. Are there any questions on this so far? Nice. Oh, question, go. OK, so let's keep going. OK, so this is like the chunk of today's lecture, today's discussion. So try to pay attention. OK, so there's this idea called dynamic method selection. And you guys are wondering, what in the world is this? OK, so let me give you an instance. Let's say that we create some object peach, right? The same one from before. And we call peach.f. OK, we call the f function. You guys look at all of these f functions that I have here, right? There's so many f functions. How does Peach choose which f function to actually execute? OK, that's the question dynamic method selection is trying to answer. There's a lot of f functions in these two classes. So which one is Peach actually going to choose? OK, in order to choose this function f, there is a very clear plan what Java does, OK? So this plan is split into two parts. There's compile time, and then there's runtime. OK? I think it's important to understand what compile time means and what runtime means. Do you guys remember the first thing you guys did in this class was create a Hello World class, and you did Javak Hello World. OK? I, I don't know how to say the word Java C. I say Javak. Whatever. Don't make fun of me. OK? So that's compiling that Java file. OK? Then when you do Java hello world, it runs the file. So you guys can kind of see that it's split into two parts, compile time and runtime. OK? So when I do peach.f peach, what we're going to do is during compile time, we're looking in the static types class for this method signature. OK? That's very important. So during compile time, we look in the class corresponding to the static type of the given instance for the method signature. OK, 
So what is this method signature? Well, we're looking for a signature f that takes in what is peach. Peach is an object of static type a. So we're looking for a function a that takes in some instance, right? We're looking for a function f that takes an instance of type a, OK? Hopefully this makes sense. This is what we're looking for. During compile time, we look in the class a, OK? So during compile time, we look in this class, and then we see, aha, there is a function, OK? So during compile time, we choose this function right here, OK? So we look in the static class, and we look for the function that matches the method signature that we want, OK? And then I want to emphasize that if we find a method signature, we're going to lock in on that method signature, OK? So I'll explain what this means later. This means, think about it, like we lock in. This is the method signature we're trying to use, OK? And if you guys don't know what method signature means, a method signature is like the method, oh gosh, I thought that was highlight mode. It's like the method name, and it's like the attributes, OK? That composes the method signature, OK? I'll be saying signature a lot today. The signature is the name of the function and the attributes that it takes in. OK, perfect. So during compile time, we choose this method signature. OK, during runtime, this is where the dynamic type of the class kicks in. We ask ourselves this question, can we do better? OK, what this question is saying is, in the instance of Peach, OK, Peach is actually an instance of class B. OK, Peach is an instance of class B. So we would rather use an f function that lives inside of class B than an f function that lives inside of class A, right? Does that intuitively make sense? If an object is of type B, right, we would rather use that function than the one of type A, OK? So during dynamic or during runtime, what we do is we look in the class corresponding to the dynamic type of the given instance. And we see if the exact signature that we locked in on during compile time exists. OK? So what we're going to do is we're looking for this method signature, f a instance, right? Something that takes in an instance of class A. So we look in class B, which is the dynamic type of the peach object. And we ask ourselves, is there this exact method signature, right? There is this exact method signature. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose to execute this signature, OK? So this is the one that we like have settled on. And during runtime, when we actually execute this call, we will be printing out, uh, we will execute this function right here, OK? So that's like the overview of how dynamic method selection works. You guys might be wondering, like, there's a lot more words on these like two pages. What about those other words? So you'll see them later as we look at like other examples. OK, um, I think I can hear myself. I'm going to mute Kai. Sorry. OK. So let's walk through one more example. I think this example is a bit more confusing, so try to pay attention. So what we're going to be doing here is peach.f of banana, OK? so. When we walk through this process, what we do is we recognize what method signature we're looking for. So we're looking for a method signature f, or the function name is f, and it takes in an object of type b. Right? This is what we're looking for. Banana, if you guys remember, was of static type b. Okay? And what's important here is this object, we care about its static type. Okay? Right? The object that's passed in as a parameter we care about its static type. We only care about the dynamic type of the instance that's calling the function, OK? Otherwise, dynamic types, right, don't worry about it. OK, so what we're doing is we're looking for this method signature, OK? So we go up to class A, right, because that's the static type of peach. And we ask ourselves, does the method signature f on a B instance exist, OK? The answer is no. There is no, right? There is no function in class A that takes in an instance of type B. But we have this method here, right? And if you guys know that an object of type B is of type A, right? So what we can do is, since we don't have the method signature we were looking for, right? We were looking for f of B object, right? We didn't have this one, but this one will suffice. 
right? It's better than nothing. So Java will select this method signature, okay? Then during runtime, what we're gonna do is look in the dynamics types class for the method signature that we locked in on during compile time, okay? So during compile time, we chose this method signature right here, right? So during runtime, what we can do is choose this method signature in class B. But you guys might be thinking, wait, Soham, wouldn't it be better if we chose this one because a banana is of type B and that's better than choosing something of type A, right? The problem is that's not how Java works. How Java works is during compile time, it chooses a method signature and it locks in on that method signature, okay? So during runtime, we can only do something in the dynamic types class if it exactly matches the method signature that we locked in on during compile time, okay? During compile time, we didn't have the option for a function that takes in something of type B, so we chose this function instead. Then during runtime, we can only go to, we can only use this function because we've locked in on this signature, so we can't change the signature that we locked in on, okay? So that's basically how dynamic method selection works. And does anyone have any questions? Yeah, so yeah. on like the lowest conceptual level without talking about much of the technicalities, it looks like we're looking at the instance that we're calling the method from, so in this case, peach. Yeah. And then we're trying to find the baseline closest method um, for whatever we're being asked for, right? So like f of banana, the baseline closest is f of a, since banana is of class, of static class b, right? Um, but like it inherits from a or something. And then, so that all of that is done during compiling time in runtime to like improve, like, can we do better? Yes. Because you're locked in, you can only look at things with the exact same signature, F of A, but yeah. now you're allowed to like look into your inheriting classes. Ooh, close. You basically got it, but we're allowed to look at the classes that like are below us. You kind of see? So I think it's like what you meant. Mm -hmm. you yeah, that's what I mean. Inheriting classes, it's like the ones like below us in the visual diagram of how classes work. Okay. Yeah. So if we were in a situation where like banana was not of type B, it was of type, some type C that didn't in, that like was not related to A at all, then you'd get a compile time error. Yeah, exactly. 100%. Okay. So right here, I'll zoom in. So if no signature exists that we're, what we're looking for, then we're going to throw a compile time error. Okay. So I kind of like, I didn't lie, but if we look in the class that we're currently in, and we don't find a method signature, then we're not gonna give up, that's kind of sad. What we're gonna do is look to see if there's any classes that are above us, any parent classes that we have, because that's how inheritance works, right? If we don't find the method we're looking for in the current class, we can look higher and higher, right? So in this example, the class that we were looking in happened to be like the parent most class, but in certain situations, you can like keep looking iteratively upwards until you find a method signature. Yeah, that's just like an aside. Okay, does anyone else have any questions? This is like, it's often a lot to take in, so please ask questions. Can I ask another clarification? Yeah, go for it. So the dynamic type only matters for the thing we're calling the method on, and it only matters for when we're looking at runtime stuff, like yes. when we're asking when we improve. Yes, 100% correct. That's like a good thing is, we can't do worse than like the method we chose during compile time, you know? So it's like dynamic type is like, can we do better? That's basically the question I like to ask. Okay, you guys will see casting messes things up a bit. So what is the dynamic type? Good question. Okay, so I think I kind of mentioned in the beginning, but I'll talk about it again. Whenever we create an object, it has a static type and a dynamic type, okay? The static type is this thing right here. That's the static type. This is the dynamic type, okay? Static type is the type of the object. Dynamic type is what the object actually is, okay? Good question. Any other questions? Okay, so 
I apologize if this has been like a little lectury, but I think like in later, I don't know, later discussions, I may not yell at you guys for this long, but for this discussion, it's good to understand this process because it's sometimes confusing. Okay. I have a quick question. Yeah, go for it. So will we be talking about overloading and overriding? Yeah, yeah, okay. So I'll talk about overloading and overriding, good question. So there's this idea of overloading and overriding. Overriding and overloading. Okay. From Monday's, from today's lecture. I think it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. So this is actually like, it's just like a technicality, just like some words, but a function is overridden if this function, right, is overridden because they have the exact same signature, okay? So overriding happens when two methods, one in a parent class, one in a subclass, share the exact method signature, okay? So this method overrides the method in the parent class, okay? And how we usually denote that is to this method, we will add a tag that says at override. Okay, you guys will learn about this more as you guys start implementing classes, but you guys will see this at override tag on certain functions. That at override tag is saying is this function is overriding an existing function that exists in the parent class, okay? So it's just a way to be very explicit when you're coding, okay? It's helpful to say like this function overrides something in the parent class, it's just good to know. So what's the idea of overloading? Overloading happens when two methods in the same class have the same function name, but different arguments, okay? I'll say that again. Overloading is when two methods in the same class have the same function name, but different arguments, okay? That's what overloading is. So these two methods are overloaded, okay? And honestly, it's not much of like this big brain idea. It's just kind of like some words to describe things, okay? Does that kind of make sense? Nice, good question. Okay, any other questions? Um, I had one. As yeah. programmers, why would we ever write two functions with the same names, but that take in different arguments in a class? Yeah, that's a really good question. So let's say that you're coding a function and you want some helper function that takes in an extra argument, right? So like, do you guys remember um, get, and then it's like, there's like a get recursive helper function that you call in like this li linked list. So yeah. what you can do yeah. to make it really, really explicit, you can make your helper function have the same like function name as the signature that you started with, but just have it take in one extra argument. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see. So that's like one use case, but yeah. Good question. This is not like trolling you guys. This actually happens. Okay. Um, other questions? Okay. Um, okay, I'm gonna keep going because there's this idea called casting. So casting is something that also confuses students a lot and you guys might've seen it before and then gotten confused. So what is casting, okay? So this is an instance of casting, okay? If we look at this call right here, what we're doing is we're casting this peach object, okay? So what is casting? Casting, to put it simply, is changing the static type of the object for and only for this function call, okay? I like to think about it as it temporarily changes the static type of the object, okay? So usually when we think about peach, right? Peach is of static type A and of dynamic type B, right? For this function call and for this function call only, the compiler will look at peach and think its static type is B. The reason the compiler will think Peach's static type is B is because I casted it to B of type B, okay? So now what's gonna happen is during compile time, when we execute this function call, we're not gonna look in class A, we're gonna look in class B, right? Because the compiler thinks that Peach is an object whose static type is B. So what's gonna happen is, going back to this example, during compile time, what we're gonna do is we will look in class B 
for the method signature that takes in an object of type banana, okay? Then we have two options to choose from, and obviously we will choose the first one, right? Because we would rather choose something that takes in an object of type B than A, right? So this is a way to solve the problem that we mentioned in the previous example, right? When we do peach.f of banana, right, we're actually like not choosing the best function that we can choose. But by casting peach to be of static type B for this function call and this function call only, we can access the better method, okay? So that's like an instance why casting might be helpful and how casting works, okay? But for subsequent, for subsequent function calls, peach will always be of static type A and dynamic type B. It's only for this instance that we temporarily change peach's static type. Okay. So the, yeah, so for the, uh, the function call will also be the uh, being this B class. Okay. Um, did anyone understand? I was like, it was a little choppy for me. Can you um, send it in the chat? I think that might be easier. I think the audio is a little tough. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm wondering, like, what method will you be calling during the runtime? Yeah, good question. Yeah, yeah. So for this example, the method we're going to be calling during the runtime is this one right here. Because the static type of peach for this function call is B, and its dynamic type is B. Since the dynamic type is the same as the static type, no dynamic method selection really happens, right? We can only really have dynamic method selection if the dynamic type is different than the static type, in which case there is a possibly better method to look for. But in this case, since the static type and the dynamic type are the same, right, then there's no dynamic method selection. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions? I have a question about uh, runtime versus compile time. Yeah, go for it. So you're saying that method calls behave differently during runtime and compile time, right? Hmm. Can you define what you mean by behave differently? So I'm talking about like when, when you scroll up and you look at the, um, you, where you wrote the runtime. Yeah. And then yeah. when you have compile time, you're, you're saying those are different things, right? Yes. Those are different. They're like different phases. So does that mean that like a method call could behave differently before if I wrote it before compiling as opposed to after compiling? So you can't write something after compiling. So like in the input after you do Java C. Okay, okay. So when you compile your code, you do Java C and then you put in like the class name, right? And then what comes out is like this file that you can't really change. You know, you can't like add code to that file. You can say like Java end body and then enter inputs, right? If you have a main method. Okay, okay. So you're talking about entering arguments for like string args in the main method. Yeah. Right? Sure. But you're not actually changing like the function calls that exist in the file. You're just talking about the idea that like when we call Java end body and we pass in like a file, all we're doing is giving the function that we're calling data. We're not actually rewriting the function calls themselves. Okay, then what, what is the runtime? Okay, okay. So you, you understand what runtime is correctly. That's 100% correct. When I do Java end body and we run the file, that's what runtime is, okay? Runtime is just the execution of the actual file. Compile time, I like to think about compile time as there's this guy, let's call him the compiler, that looks at your code and sees if anything is blatantly wrong, okay? Just imagine like some person, maybe like hug, looks at everything in your code and says like if anything's wrong or not. That's what compile time is. Okay, so during compile time, we can look for if the method signature doesn't exist. We can look to see if this illegal, right? The compiler will catch this because it's pretty obvious. Okay, so during compile time, we catch for those things. During runtime, we actually execute the function calls. Does that kind of make sense? Okay, yeah. So Okay, you can like, we can talk about it after discussion too. Okay. Would you give an example of runtime error? I can understand the compilation error when you cannot yeah. find that. How about yeah. runtime? Okay, good question. So I'm gonna talk about this question after we do the first example because there will be a runtime error. So it's hard for you guys to think of an instance of a runtime error, but 
There is, and it has to do with casting. Okay, so you guys will see in the example, but I think, yeah, I'll, I'll answer that one later. I don't want to include myself. Yeah, good question. Any other questions? Hello, okay, perfect. So that's all of like the mini lecture I had. I want you guys to try problem one in the exam prep discussion worksheet. So only do part A, there's a part A and a part B. Part B kind of relies on part A. So is there a link to the worksheet? Yes, there is. Does anyone who has the link open right now could send it in the chat? I don't, I have mine already downloaded on the iPad, but yeah. Is there a person out there? Yay, okay, we have three people, amazing, okay. So take some time, try this example. You guys can message me if you have questions, otherwise I will be quiet. Okay, perfect. All right, so on the right hand side, you guys can kind of see that I have this weird chart. This chart is really helpful for me personally to see the static and dynamic type of all of my objects. Sometimes if you reassign an object to something else, it's type changes, so it's good to keep track of it in some chart, okay? So Itai is a person and its dynamic type is also a person. And for simplicity, we could just use P, A, and S, P, okay? Then we have a soccer player who is a person. Oh wait, does that work? No, it doesn't work because a person is not necessarily a soccer player, okay? So there's also like not even an option to put Shivani in. So <laughs> you guys probably noticed. Okay, so the next one is athlete Soham is a new soccer player, okay? So my static type is A and my dynamic type is SP, okay? And then Jack is a person who's dynamic type is athlete. And then we have Anjali, who's straight up an athlete. And then we have Chiroshri, who's a soccer player. Okay. So quickly, we've figured out static and dynamic types of all the objects. And now we can walk through these function calls. Okay. So the first one is itai.watchchiroshri. I'm going to be very methodical as I walk through these. Okay. And the reason, it may be a little redundant, but I want to emphasize how Java executes all of these commands. Okay. So watch Chiroshri. Okay, is line three a compile time or runtime error? Good question, it's a compile time error. Okay, that's my bad, I should have added that in. Okay, good catch, good catch, thank you. Okay, so we're itai.watchchiroshri. We were looking for a watch function that takes in a soccer player, right? That's what we are looking for. What do we do? We look in the static types class. Itai is a person. So we look in this person class for a watch function. There's only one watch function that takes in an athlete, right? A soccer player is an athlete, so this suffices. And then we will print out wow, right? Okay. Then we do chiroshri.watchitai. So what do we do? We are looking for a watch function that takes in a person. During compile time, we look in the soccer player class for a watch function. Nothing is there. Java doesn't give up quite yet. It looks in the athlete class. Nothing is there. It looks in the person class. It finds a watch function, but the watch function it finds takes in an athlete, and Itai is a person and not an athlete. So during compile time, we get a compile time error because we couldn't find a method signature that sufficed. Nice. OK. So the next one we do is jack.speak to Anjali. Right? Every time we do the same thing. Speak to, Anjali is an athlete. We are looking for a speak to function that takes in an athlete, okay? So where do we look? Jack is a person, so we look in the person class. In the person class, we see a speak to method that takes in an athlete, okay? Right? Then during runtime, we ask ourselves, is there a speak to method in the athlete class that's the exact same signature as the one that we locked in on during compile time? Okay, 
we locked in on this method signature and we only do dynamic method selection when the object has a different dynamic type, right? And since Jack's dynamic type is athlete, we look in the athlete class during runtime, except there is not a speak to method that has the same signature. So then we just use the one that we locked in on compile time and then we print out kudos, right? Okay. And feel free to stop me if you guys have questions. I think it's a little more slow if I say, do, I have, do you guys have questions after everyone? So to stop me if you guys have questions, I won't be insulted. Okay. So the next one we do is Anjali.speak to Soham. So Anjali is an athlete. So we're looking for a speak to athlete function in the athlete class. Okay. So we go to the athlete class. We're looking for a speak to athlete. Okay. This is very confusing. So pay attention. This is a really weird situation in Java. Okay. So Anjali is looking for a speak to method that takes in an athlete. In the athlete class, we have this speak to method that takes in a person, which would work, right? It suffices. But if we look in the parent class, we have a better speak to method, right? Because this is a better one. This is the one in the parent class is a bit better because it's exactly what we were looking for. So which one will Java choose? Will it choose the not as good one in the static class or will it choose the better one in the parent class? And honestly, if I was in your shoes, I would have no idea. This is like a weird situation. What Java actually chooses is it chooses the exact, the signature that matches closer in the parent class, okay? So we will actually choose this method signature, okay? The reasoning why I like to like justify this is Java would rather prioritize matching the method signature exactly than choosing something in the current class, okay? So if we find a method that has a better method signature than the one in our static class, right? We would rather choose the one with a better, better method signature, okay? So in this case, we will choose the speak to method in the person class and print out kudos. Nice. Okay. So let's keep going. Etai.speak to Sohan. Oh, question. Is that um, like the some difference between compiling versus running or something? No, no. I know you had mentioned. Like, huh? This is all happening during compile time. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So there's just this weird case where. Yeah. It's just a weird. It doesn't case. Match, but there happens to be a perfect match. It will choose the perfect match. Yeah. Or and it doesn't even have to be a perfect, perfect match. It just has to be a better match. match. It just has to be a better match than the one we locked in on. Okay. Yeah. Why does line? Sorry, can I, can I ask a question yeah. before you? Yeah. Okay. Right. Um. So in during compile time, like you can move up a yeah. class or like up the hierarchy, but you can't move to a better dynamic until runtime. Yes. Basically. Exactly. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. The reasoning is like. When you guys took APCS or like if you guys learned inheritance, during compile time, we're used to the idea that we can keep looking in our parent classes, right? That's what inheritance tells us. And the compiler knows this, that during compile time, we look in the parent classes. And it should also make sense because inheritance is solely dependent on the static type of the object, right? So given that the static type of Anjali is an athlete, we know that we can look in the person class for a method. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, so let's go to etai.speak to Soham. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good clarification. Okay, so etai is a person. I don't know why I wrote that. Okay, so we're looking for a speak, sorry. We're looking for a speak to method in the person class that takes in an object of type athlete, right? So we go to the person class and then we find one right here, right? So an etai is only a person, so this one's straightforward. We just print out kudos. Okay. So the next one is soham.speak to Jack, okay? So soham is of type athlete and of static, or of static type athlete and dynamic type soccer player. So during compile time, we look in the athlete class for a method signature of speak to 
person, right? We're looking for a speak to person in the athlete class, okay? We find one right here, so we lock in on this method signature. Then during runtime, where we actually have dynamic method selection, because Soham is a soccer player, we ask ourselves, can we do better? And yes, we can do better because in the soccer player class, we have the exact same method signature. So in this case, we will use dynamic method selection to print out hump. Okay, that's the wrong spot. Okay, perfect. So the next one is soham.speak to chiroshri. How this one works is we look in this athlete class, because soham is an athlete, for a method signature that takes in an object. Oh, actually, I think this one's not on your work, you guys' worksheet, right? Okay, sorry, that was confusing. Okay, I'm gonna skip this one. There, I made some edits to the worksheet last minute. This one's like a bit hard. And then you guys also didn't have itai.speak to Soham, right? Okay. Okay, I'm sorry about that. That's my bad. Okay, I made some edits because this one was a little too easy and this one was a little too hard. Okay, so you guys do have jack.play chiroshi, right? All of this is good? Okay, perfect. Sorry about that. So jack.play chiroshi, what we're going to do is we will look in the person class for a play method that takes in a soccer player, right? We look in the person class for a play method, none exists, so we throw a compile time error, right? The reason it's a compile time error is because during compile time, we can't find the method signature we're looking for, so we just give up, okay? So then what we do is we try casting Jack to be a soccer player, okay? And then we try to speak to a Chiroshri, okay? So what's gonna happen here is now we have some casting. Casting is a bit confusing, so let's try to understand what's happening, okay? Jack is actually a athlete, but we're casting him to type soccer player, okay? So think about this, we're trying to make Jack a soccer player, right? We're trying to make his static type soccer player, but his actual type is an athlete, okay? So off the bat, this doesn't look right and it's not right, okay? So the question is, it's going to error, but does it happen during compile time or runtime, okay? So what's gonna happen during compile time is that Java doesn't know what the dynamic type of Jack is. So during compile time, we just look in the soccer player class for a speak to soccer player method, okay? And then there's one right here, okay? So we lock in on this method, okay? So during compile time, everything's fine because Java doesn't actually know what Jack really is, okay? Then during runtime, Jack is like, I messed with you, I'm actually an athlete. And then Java is like, okay, like that's a problem because an athlete doesn't have access to a soccer player's method, okay? So what's gonna happen is during runtime, Java realizes that we have this mistake, we have this error, so it's gonna throw a runtime error, okay? And we only know about dynamic types during runtime, that's why it's a runtime error, okay? Good. Sorry, I'm confused. I thought casting you wrote changes, temporarily changes the static type. Yes. So if Jack started out as a person and then was casted as a soccer player, yeah. then what's the issue? Okay, the issue is that Jack started off as a static type person, dynamic type athlete. We mm -hmm. cast Jack, now he's a static type soccer player, dynamic type athlete, okay? Mm -hmm. This is a problem because an athlete is not necessarily a soccer player, but Java only realizes this during runtime because Java cannot see the dynamic type of objects during compile time. So during compile time, it just treats Jack as some soccer player instance, right? Looks in the soccer player class, it finds the method it's looking for, everything's chilling. During runtime, realizes Jack's a fraud, then says, okay, runtime error. Does that kind of make sense? Runtime is the only time that you're looking at this at a dynamic type for the... Yes, runtime okay. equals dynamic. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Good question. Okay. Um, so essentially, um, if I cast something into a different data type or different class type, it doesn't grant it access to those methods in that class I'm casting it to? No. So casting, all it's doing is just changing that static type of the object. 
okay? It's not giving it any more permissions. It's not doing anything beyond just changing the static type of the object, okay? So that's all casting is doing. It's just static type different, that's it. Yeah, good clarification. Casting is confusing, but if you guys try to simplify it to yourselves by saying that casting is only temporarily changing the static type of the object, then I think hopefully it'll make more sense. Okay, so we have like a minute left. I wanted to get through question. You guys don't have this question. My bad, my bad. I added the worksheet yesterday and I had the old version. Okay, so I wanted to get through question B. So I'll probably stay like another 10 minutes. Whoever wants to say, you guys can feel free to stay. In the future, I'll try to like preface if I'm going to be going over time just so you guys can like manage your schedule better. I apologize. Okay, so let's finish going here. What is interface? Okay, so I think I'll talk about interface after discussion, but yeah, good question. Okay, so Soham is of type athlete, right? But we're casting him to type soccer player, okay? So what's happening here is that for this function call and for this function call only, Soham's static type and his dynamic type are both soccer player, okay? Then we'll do speak to Itai. So he's trying to speak to a person. So we look in the soccer player class for a method signature that's speak to person. We lock in on this method signature. And then during runtime, we actually execute it. Okay. So we'll print out hump. Okay. So the next one is chiroshree.speak to soccer player of Soham. Okay. So what's happening here is that Chiroshri is of type soccer player, right? So we're looking for a speak to method that takes in a soccer player because we casted Soham, now his static type is soccer player. So we're looking for a speak to method that takes in an instance of type soccer player in the soccer player class, okay? And then we find two speak to methods, we choose the better one, and then during runtime, we print out howdy. Okay, nice. So the last one, we change Chiroshri's static type to be person. So now Chiroshri is of static type person and of dynamic type soccer player, right? Okay, so during compile time, we look in the class corresponding to the static type, right? Chiroshri's static type is now person so we look in the person class for a speak to function that takes in a person, okay? But there is no speak to function here, right? The only speak to function takes in an athlete and Itai is not an athlete, Itai is a person. So what's gonna happen is we will throw a compile time error because we couldn't find the method signature we are looking for, okay? So yeah, with that, we're gonna, I'm gonna stay like another 10 minutes to get to question B, but if you guys have to leave, feel free to drop off. Okay, I'll also open the floor for questions. So ask away. That last one, person Chiroshri, yeah. um, if there were a method found, like if there were a signature that um, was found during comp compiling, yeah. then during running, it would throw a runtime error, right? Because Ooh. the Wait, Good question. Static type person, dynamic type soccer player. Ooh. No, never. <laughs> Good question. Let's play through that instance. So the idea is, let's say that, let's say there's a speak to person method in the person class. Okay. We all know what's going to happen. So person, right? Chiroshri is of type person. So we look in the person class for a speak to method that takes in a person, right? Right, because that's what Itai is. Itai is a person. So we go up here and then we lock in. Let me get rid of all this other yellow. We lock in on this method. Okay. Then during runtime, right, we figure out the, the, the dynamic type of Chiroshri. The dynamic type of Chiroshri is a soccer player, right? Because she's a static type person, dynamic type soccer player. So since the dynamic type differs from the static type, there is dynamic method selection. So what we do is we look in the dynamic class of the instance, Chiroshri, and we're looking for a speak to method that takes in a person. And there indeed is a method, right? Speak to person other. So we print out 
can't. Right? In this situation that the speak to person exists. My question was more so oh, like my bad. Okay. Wasn't for no, I mean that was a great example okay, okay. to clarify some stuff. But like if um Chirishu was casted as a as a um well, if any, anything like lower than a soccer player, then, and if you did happen to find a method within the co compiling, yeah. when you ran, that would throw a runtime error, yeah. right? Yeah. Because, okay. Yeah. Okay. One other like small thing, you guys could probably figure this one out, but let's say going back to my old example, that this method didn't exist. Okay. So what will happen? We're going back to the, like the one we just walking through. Okay, we're trying to do person casted to a tree dot speak to etai. So during compile time, we look in the person class and we find the speak to person method. We lock in on that method signature. Then during dynamic time, we look in the soccer player class and we don't find the method signature that we're looking for. But we don't give up. What we do is we look in the parent classes and we lock in on this method signature. The reason is because this thing, right, the athlete method signature is still better than the person method signature, right? Since Chiro Shri is actually a soccer player, it's better to call the athlete speak to function versus calling the person speak to function because Chiro Shri is more of an athlete than a person, okay? So that kind of touches upon this idea of during runtime, we keep checking classes between the dynamic type and static type, right? So if there's like the dynamic type is really far down this imaginary like tree, then we keep checking the classes between, okay? So yeah, I think hopefully with that, you guys are like feeling more confident on static and dynamic types, okay? Okay, so I'm just gonna walk through the last one and then you guys can leave this discussion. <laughs> okay, so the last one is saying, we can add or remove casts and we wanna solve as many of the errors as possible that happened above, okay? So let's just first figure out which lines erred. Okay, so this line erred, right? We had a compile time error there. We had a runtime error here. And we had a compile time error here. And then we had a compile time error here, okay? We also had a compile time error here but we can't really solve this one. So I'm just gonna ignore it. Okay, so these are the four errors that we have and let's try to fix them. This is like actual programming. I think this is important skills to take away. Okay, so we're looking at, let's try to fix this first one, chiroshri.watchitai. And the tool that we can use to fix them is casting. Okay, what does casting do? Casting this changes the static type of the object. Okay, so if you guys remember, the problem in this method is that we're looking for a watch that takes in a person or that takes in in, right? We're looking for a watch that takes in a person, but when we look in the person class, we find a method signature that doesn't fulfill what we're looking for, right? So this is the problem. We're looking for a watch person, but we find a watch athlete. So what you guys might think is like, what if we just cast Etai to be of type athlete? right? Would this solve the problem? Okay. So what will happen here is that during compile time, it'll be fine. But during runtime, Java will realize that Etai is not of type athlete and it will complain. Okay. So this doesn't work. This is not a solution. This merely changes the problem from a compile time error to a runtime error. Okay. I want to emphasize why again, because it's very important to understand why it's a runtime error and not a compile time error, okay? If we try to cast Etai to be of type athlete, during compile time, the compiler doesn't know what Etai actually is, right? So it sees Etai of something of type athlete, and it's saying we have a method signature of type athlete right here, so yay, we found what we were looking for. Then during runtime, we realize that, okay, like this is not, what we were looking for, Etai is not actually an athlete, the compiler was, or the cast was lying to me, right? So during runtime, we then throw the error. Okay, so this is unsolvable. Nice, okay, so can we change this one? 
Okay, what if we cast it in line one? Okay, so we can't really cast it in line one because we can't change like the static type of the object permanently because casting only changes it for that function call, right? So we can't change the static type in line one. Yeah, good question there. Okay. What if we had um, changed Shirashri? What if we had cast her to a person? Oh, there's no no difference there because Chirashri is like think about a soccer player has all the ac like access that a person has but more, right? So oh, okay. intuitively, by limiting Chirashri's access, we're not like giving her any more power, you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good question. Okay, so there's three more errors and then we can call it a day. Let's do this. Jack dot play Chirashri. First, what is the problem here? The problem is we look in the person class for a method that takes in, right, for the play method. But the play method doesn't exist in the person class. So what do we do is we complain compile time error, right? That was the problem that happened. But what we can do is notice a play method exists in the athlete class, right? And what would happen if we change Jack to be of type static type athlete by a cast, okay? Now what will happen is during compile time, we will say, Jack, you have type static type athlete, look in the athlete class. We look in the athlete class, we find a play method, and then we lock in on that method. Then during runtime, right, nothing happens and no complaints happen because Jack is actually an athlete. So casting Jack, sorry, casting, yeah, same Jack, same Jack. Casting this Jack to an athlete is a valid cast. Okay, so the first fix is we can do athlete of Jack dot play. I think he's playing against Chiro Shri. Nice, okay. So we have two more quick ones, okay. The problem here is that we try to cast Jack to a type soccer player which fails, okay. So let's say, what if we remove this cast? We can do jack dot speak to Shiroshri. Will this work? And the simple answer is yes, this will work. If we simply remove the cast, then we look in the athlete class, or we look in the person class for a speak to method that takes in a athlete. Oh, it takes in a soccer player, but then we settle on the one that takes in an athlete, right? So simply here, if we remove the cast, we'll solve the problem. Okay. Jack dot speak to. Sorry for my handwriting too. I know it's probably annoying. Okay. So the last one is casting Chiroshri to be of type person cause a compile time error, right? So can we solve this one? Well. Similarly to the last example, if we get rid of this cast, we will do chiroshri.speak to itai. We'll look in the soccer player class for a speak to method that takes in a person, and we find one, so we solve the problem. Okay, so we can solve the last one by, by removing the cast as well. Okay, so yeah, I think that's all for this discussion. I'll be releasing a walkthrough video for the next two questions. So be on the lookout for those if you guys want to go through them in your free time and then you guys can watch an explanation. But other than that, feel free to head out, be back if you guys have questions. And yeah, thanks for coming. Thanks, Soham. Yeah, you guys are welcome. Thank you.